now that we've talked about the concept of social networks and why we would use them as a form of marketing, so social media marketing, now that we've talked about that and seen an example, Mashable, which is a big example, what we're going to do now is create an account together and um, go about setting it up and actually using it effectively. So wherever you're at, let's go to the address on your web browser, plus.google.com. Plus.google.com. plus.google.com, and then it asks you log in. One account, all of Google, sign in to continue to Google+. Plus. Now, before we, before we sign in, Google+, Plus is part of the whole Google family of products. You can see them down here, Gmail, Maps, YouTube, etc. Uh, so if you have an Android phone, most likely you automatically have a Google account. If you have Gmail, you have a Google account. If you've got a YouTube, you probably have a Google account. So there's two ways to set this up. One is if you've got an existing account, we can use that Gmail account or whatever you have to log in with it, and then it'll say, activate Google+. We'll see that in a moment. The other way is you can create a brand new account to use for this. So let's stop here because people always take this class and have a variety of of uh, possibilities of why they take this class. Some people already created a Google Plus account, but they created it wrong. I'll explain that in a moment. Some people already have a Gmail account, but they say, should I use my Gmail account because I'm trying to set up an account for my business. Um, and some people already have a Google Plus account, and it's all set up, and they just want to learn the new stuff. So I get a variety of people. Now, I'm going to say that I like Google Plus in that it has the ability for multiple managers, multiple people, to access the same Google Plus profile. I can have my own login, and Patricia in the company has her own login, and Sharna in the company has her own login. Each one of us logs in with our own password, our own credentials, but we all have access to the same one PMD Interactive account, and we can, each of us, uh, post something, reply to someone, delete something. Each of us is a manager to that page. So the confusion comes from, we need to create, Google wants us to create a personal account first, and then as many business accounts with managers as we want or need. So if you already created a Google Plus business page, but you didn't do it the way I'm going to talk about, you probably created a personal account. Google doesn't want that. Technically, you're in violation of their terms, and they could shut down your account because you're not using a business page for a business, uh, you know, company. You're using a personal profile for business purposes. And that's some terminology we're going to get, need to get used to. Unfortunately, the terms are very generic. A profile is for a person. And a page is for a business. Very similar terminology in Facebook when we get to that as well. We're going to use, we're going to throw the words around page all the time. But technically, a page is for a business page, a business account, and a profile is for a person. So Google and Facebook want us to create personal profiles. We don't have to use them, just like I don't use my Facebook personal profile. You don't have to use your personal profile. You don't have to put your high school. You don't have to connect to your friends and family. You don't have to put where you graduated and worked at and lived and all of that for personal. You don't have to do any of that, but you do need a personal profile, and then we can create as many business pages as we want. And then we get our other people from our company, we give them access to the business page. So everyone logs in with their own personal profile password, 
That way I'm not giving my password to seven people. Each person has their own password. They all log in and they all see the business page. And they can edit it. And we can give different levels of access. We'll get to that later. That's the big idea for the moment. This will also apply on Facebook. Profile for personal, page for business. So let's try to remember that terminology. I'll try also. It's hard to sometimes remember because the words are so generic. But page is business, profile is personal. So here then it's asking, let's log in. Again, depending if you've already done this before, did you set this up with john at gmail.com? That sounds like a personal profile. Did you try to create victorsbakery.gmail.com? Yeah, I wanted a business page, but I created it as a person because this is about creating a personal profile, not a business page. That's later, after you've created the personal, after you've logged into the personal. So I cannot unfortunately show you exactly the process of creating an account here, but either log in with your existing personal Gmail account or select to create a new personal Gmail account and then after we've all managed to log in or create, next screen we will create the business one. I can't show it to you. I've already exhausted all my emails. I can't create another account. It won't let me. So you take a moment to either log in or create an account and again to tell you to assuage your fears. Me as personal account, as Victor Campos, I created my personal profile and I've created seven business pages for a bunch of clients. You can do that. So it's okay that you create a personal profile, then we will create the business ones. Let's take a couple of minutes to do that. Log in or create. Call me over if you have a problem. Once we manage to log in, I'll show you from that point. I can't show you this exactly, unfortunately. I ask you for a phone number. You want to provide a phone number for security. They're not going to call you and try to sell you stuff. It is for security. This is still the public profiles of persons who are speaking. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm using that. Oh, that's right. Did you create this right now?
We only need to do this once, but Google does want a personal account, a personal profile, and then I'll talk about creating the business pages in the moment. I want to make sure everyone is able to do it as best as possible. Let's see, personal All right, does anyone need a little help? I think almost everyone's got it. everyone. If you're not quite there yet, that's okay. I need to move on, but at this point, let's, uh, let's continue. So if you are helping your neighbor, remember to do it at a quieter volume, please. So here we go. Um, I've created an account. I've created an account, and uh, I've got my own uh, name on the top right corner. This is the important thing, that you've created an account. I've set mine up because, like I said, I like to use Google+. 
for personal for personal social media I like to connect with people I have fun here so I have my icon there I put in my name I've got I use it actually but from pretty much everyone here I was saying just skip this skip this click continue don't use it you're not really gonna care about it for personal purposes we need it for business so let me show you this notice my pictures on the top right you've just got that little blue person but if you click on that blue person on the top right for me notice how it shows manage this company manage that company manage this company manage that page so that's what I'm saying I'm I have my personal account but then I'm managing all of these business accounts and none of my personal stuff shows up on any of these so don't worry about that but Google wants you to create a personal account a person for them to create business pages and notice here I'm managing a variety of business pages not profiles pages at the very top right corner, does it say profile? That means you've got a personal profile. Later on, when we create the business page, that will then switch to say page. That's one of the ways you can tell. Am I on personal or am I on business? For yours, because it's brand new, I don't think it shows anything there, right? Okay. So don't worry about that. In the center here, we'll talk about the anatomy of Google Plus in a moment. But just so that we're all looking at the same thing, do you see on the top left corner next to the logo that a preschooler drew, you're going to see the home icon. Uh, that menu there will change depending on what screen you're at. Don't click on it. Put your mouse on it, and then it pops open to say, let's go look at your profile, your photos, whatever. Go ahead and click on, uh, after you hover over that home menu, then click on profile. The screen changes to profile. The icon changes to profile. So I'm sure that menu has an official name. I never learned it. So I don't call it the home menu because it always changes. If I go over to photos, now the menu says, well, it changes completely, but it would say photos. If I go over to collections, it says collections. So that menu name always changes. I just call it the menu, the Google Plus menu. But home profile, collections, etc. We'll talk about what all of those screens are. But what I want to do is hover over the menu, wherever it's at, and then click on Pages. This is where a personal profile can manage multiple business pages. <clears throat> so hover over the menu and then click on Pages. You notice here again, this is just another way for me to, to, to see it. These companies that I manage their businesses for, along with other people, I see it at a glance. There are different profiles. I'm sorry, there are different pages. These are all pages. And I have the ability then to manage a page, which allows me to post, delete, reply to people, all of that. Yours doesn't have anything yet. I believe it shows a video that tells you why Google Plus is so great. But you should see, I believe it'll show a button that says Get Your Page. So if you see that Get Your Page button, click it. And so then it's saying, What kind of business? You can change these if you don't choose the right one. But the differences are storefront, which is a restaurant, retail, store. You know, it's a physical location. You're going to need to provide. If I were to select storefront, don't click it yet, but if I were to click on storefront, I would have to provide what's the address of my business. I would have to provide a business and proof that that location that I'm choosing is my business. Because if there is no way to verify that, your competitor could create a Google Plus page in your name and then put how they found a cockroach in the food. <laughs> so if you're going to select storefront, and service area, you need to provide an address and proof that that location of yours is a real location. And there's some sort of process if you choose service area because let's say you're a pizza delivery. Maybe you only deliver pizza, you don't have a, a, a store where people can buy the pizza. You're a plumber, so you have to go to their location, not your location. So that's another kind of process to set up. So because we can create as many prof as many Google Plus business pages as we want, 
and delete them with no consequence, I'm going to suggest for all of us to select brands, even if you do have a physical location, because you're not probably going to be able to verify it at the moment. I believe what it'll ask you to do is it'll want to call you at your business phone number. So if you're not at the shop at the moment, you can't answer it. And if you've got someone to answer it, you're going to be running inside and outside here disturbing the lecture, talking to the people at the front desk. So I'm going to say, which can be deleted and changed later, we're all going to choose brand. Even though we have a physical location, we can deal with it later. Click brand. Page name. This is not the unique vanity address. This is not google.com slash plus my business. Just like I showed you google.com slash plus Mashable. It's not that. That's in a different section. This is just what's the name that my business is going to have on Google Plus when people search and I appear on a Google search. That's the name. So put your business name here. You can make this all up if you want. I'm going to make it up. I don't have a bakery. I'm making up Victor's Bakery. Yes. This works just fine as well. Your brand is going to be yourself as a writer. So if you're known as your name, or if you're known as the clever pen, or you know pseudonym or whatever, put that in. If you have a website, and again, most of us are still going to want a website because that's where I've got my shopping cart. Doesn't really matter. I just put it out of habit. But. Uh, you want to put your web address, your correct web address. Type of page, product or brand, it's not too many to choose from. Whichever one should be fine. There's no wrong answer here, and we can change it later. So Victor's Bakery, I'm a, I'm a bakery, baked goods. So I'm going to choose uh, a brand. Victor's Bakery is my brand. That'll work. Other could also work. So we're using all these social networks. Technically, their technology and such is owned by another company, Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And so there are terms that we have to adhere to. These networks, unfortunately, are not like the phone company, where I believe the phone company is very, 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 very liberal in that you can do anything on the phone, right? You can call and harass people. You can talk hate speech on the phone, you can talk violence, you know, the phone is just a, it's just a pipe to carry your voice. Um, these networks at the moment are not like that. There are terms of service that if you run afoul of them, you could get your account shut down. What are those terms? Well, open up a nice bottle of wine and click there to read it, because there's going to be a lot to read. Google Plus pages additional terms of service. Terms of use of the addresses, additional terms, blah, 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 authority of access, the content, who owns it, you own your content, but you're not going to violate copyrights. If you don't agree to any of these terms, close your web browser right now. Because to use any of these networks, you do have to agree to these terms. And sometimes the terms are very strict, and sometimes they're very open, and you don't know until you read them. Most of us don't read them. And unfortunately, there are examples once in a while that these terms do come back to bite you. But usually we will be okay if we're not running like some sort of uh, Swiss bank account stuff. So um, you should be okay. Check that on and click Create Page. So it might ask you for a phone number. Let's see if this will work for me, because I might have used too many phone numbers. All right, so I may or may not have asked for a phone number. If it did, try to get it to send you a text message. This is, again, just to verify. You might think, I'm giving them my phone number. I don't want a record of my phone and all of that. Well, um, 
they're not going to use the phone number to call you and sell you stuff. This is to verify because there was a question asked, they've got so many followers, how many of them are fake? Well, there are going to be fake followers, unfortunately, but these companies are getting better at stamping them, that out because Facebook, for example, they are a publicly traded company. They're on the stock market. That means they have shareholders they need to satisfy. If Facebook is not satisfying their shareholders, who cares if you're not having a good time on Facebook? Is it's Are the shareholders having a good time on Facebook? Same thing with Twitter. They recently went public as well. You can buy shares on Twitter. As a matter of fact, you might want to buy shares on Twitter right now because they're, they're priced really, really, really low. So um, Google Plus is part of the larger Google family, and Google is on the stock market. They have shareholders. So um, I lost my train of thought. Why am I talking about shareholders? Um, they're the ones that matter. In a sense, so you were talking about creating fake profiles. Oh yes, fake profiles. That's why it's asking for your phone number and such to try to weed out the fake accounts, because before anyone could create any account very very easily, but now they want to verify with a phone number and an email address and that sort of thing, so that it keeps the spammers at bay. They want real people creating a real account so that the shareholders are happy. That's what I was getting at. So. Um, I get to this screen, welcome to Google My Business. We've brought the best together of Google all in one place. So this is one of the steps that's going to get you further than your competitor. If I'm a bakery and so is the company down the street, but if I've gone through the process of creating Google Plus profile and they haven't, and people search for bakeries on Main Street, my bakery could appear first because I've chosen to put my best foot forward on Google, whereas my competitor has not. I've created a Google Plus profile, I've added my address, I've added pictures. Google is going to say, oh, they're playing along. Let's put them higher than the competitor that hasn't. And so that's one of the reasons you want to get Google Plus. Your competitors might not have it, and therefore you can get ahead of them. If you see this screen, great. If you don't, just wait a moment. But I see this screen and I say, and I see get started. If you see the get started button, click it. If you don't see it, just wait a moment. Get started. It's going to show you a bunch of things that we need to fill out eventually. Be found by your customers. Complete your business information to help customers find you on Google Search Maps and Plus. That's that point to get found, to get that little box that makes you unique compared to your competitors, filling this stuff out. We'll do it together and I'll give you advice in a moment. Yes? Okay. No problem. Okay. Yes? So those little boxes, people are paying, paying to get there? Nope. And, and that will come up when anyone searches it or only when Google Plus active people search it? Notice at the beginning of the day we searched it and it's I was not logged in. Yeah, we were not logged in with Google Plus. So it, it, it shows up even without Google Plus. So that's why you want to get into it. And we're not paying for that. The ones that are marked with ad, those are paid. Those are paid. But those little special call-out boxes, that's attached to a Google Plus account, which is free to set up. Well, yes? Let's say we're all bakeries and all bakeries. Then you go on and you Google search a bakery. How do you get your first... You know, everybody's using Google Plus now, so how... That's how going to depend... Account? That's going to depend on you setting up your profile completely, like we'll talk about it in a moment, and using it. Because everyone here might set it up, but then no one uses it next uh, anymore. So the more you use it, the more you interact, the more followers, that's going to help you rise above the rest. And that's part of what we'll be talking about throughout the course, too. So the first part of the tour, OK, that's fine. Click Next. It's telling you, you've got a Google Plus, it'll help you get found in all these networks. Yes. yes. Will it prompt you these prompts every time you set up the profile? Will it ask you these questions like, be found by your customer on each business page that you set up? Yes. Okay. This will always come up when you have a brand new account to remind you to fill it in. Click Next. And then down here it's saying, engage your customers. Okay, we've all created an account and maybe we're all a bakery, but here's how you differentiate yourself. Uh, again, 
when I talk about that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon, how many others do that? How many others do that 20% coupon or that $5 coupon? You know, not a lot of other companies do that exact kind of thing. Some, you know, copy that, but Bed Bath has kind of made themselves a little famous in that kind of coupon. So we're going to make ourselves famous by using Google+. Plus. We'll talk about all of these things in a moment, but it's saying engage your customers. Unfortunately, if you build it, they will not come. You have to, you have to let them know you've built it. You've let, you have to let them know that your page exists. We'll talk about that. We need to get followers. But here it's saying share updates, news, special offers, photos, events, polls, videos. Share that stuff so that you entice people to follow. And once you've got a hundred followers, one percent of that are going to start paying, and then that's going to be building and building, and it's going to snow, snowball. Click Next. Access all your business apps. Navigate between Google and your businesses. Um, it's telling you that that little sort of like number pad, like a telephone, that is going to list all of the Google services you now have access to. That Gmail account gives you access to Google+, Google Voice, Gmail, YouTube, uh, etc. It's all going to be listed here to navigate from one to the other. <clears throat> so if you ever get lost, I thought I was in Google+. Plus. Well, make sure you click on that icon up there and select Google+. Plus. Next. Switch profiles easily. All it takes is a quick click to switch between your business and personal identities on Google. Click Done. I'm going to take a break in, in a moment. What I want to do before the break is we've got this profile that we've just created. I'm sorry, this page that we've just created. We have the profile, and we can tell that at the top right, Victor's Bakery. There's the name of my business. If it still says your personal name, you're on your personal profile. If it says your business's name, you're on your business page. Be on the lookout for that. Eventually, you want to add the icon of your business. I'll show you how in a moment, because that'll also be a quick way to see. I'm, I'm posting on my business page, because it happens to the best of us. It's happened to me, where I accidentally post a personal thing to one of my clients' pages. <laughs> Vice versa, I think I'm posting a business thing to my personal account. So you want to make sure you're in the right type of account. Check the name on the top right, and if it's the wrong name, click on that little icon at the top right. It tells me I'm on my Victor's Bakery Google Plus page. If I go to my default profile, that's my personal account right there. I don't want to scroll down because I don't know what will show up. <laughs> but if I click on it again, then I can go back to edit that client, or go on it to edit this client or go back to edit the current page I just made right now. So keep an eye out for that to show what the account that you're working on the account that you're working on so that you're posting the right thing on the right spot. So everyone should be on their business page, not their personal profile. If you're not on the right one, switch between them on that icon up there. And we want to get followers. You know, um, we want to get a captive audience. Currently this says I have zero followers. And again, just because I created an account doesn't mean people know that I exist or will follow me. So we get to sort of a chicken or the egg question, which comes first. Do I start to post stuff on Google Plus or any social network before I have an audience? Because I'm sort of like talking to no one if I have no followers. Do I start to post to no one? Or do I first pro co uh, completely set up my account but no one's going to look at it. Again, I don't have any followers. I'm going to say, 
you're going to first set up your account as much as possible and then start posting to no one and then we're going to start to talk about attracting followers because if we're trying to fish if we're trying to catch a fish we'll catch a fish better with some bait that hook itself is not going to work we need a nice juicy worm on it so we need to bait our hook and part of that is so that we don't have the generic blue icon that everyone has so that we don't have an empty tagline we don't have our profile graphics set up we don't want to have a completely skeletal profile what would entice people to follow us so we're going to take a moment to start to edit our basic profile information then we're going to post a few posts to no one but then we're going to have content we're going to have bait to catch some fish to get some followers so here on this screen click edit big red edit button this should take you to so a moment ago I was in the my business screen that's what the icon the menu said there and now that I've clicked edit it took me to my Google Plus page right the menu here looks a little different now that I'm a business page I have my business Google Plus page stream and some other ones are the same but that menu now is a little different and I'm in my Google Plus page screen. This is what people will see when they stumble upon my profile, which is nothing. Just a website and a generic paper, and that's it. No one's going to be enticed to click the follow button. You don't see the follow button on your own profile, of course. But when someone visits your profile, they will see a follow button there. There's nothing here to entice them to follow. So what we want to do is, notice if you hover your mouse over that icon there, it lets you choose a new profile photo. I don't have my company's icon here. I left it at home. So if you, if you have the ability to add your company profile, do it as soon as you can, because you don't want that generic blue gift icon. That's a mark of an amateur. That's a mark of a spammer. You also, if you hover over that generic picture, get chain change cover this cover photo you want to change that as well some sort of unique graphic about your company or your your brand or whatever you're doing online so that it's not the generic Google graphics again that's the mark of an amateur an amateur spammer so I don't have my graphics handy to update these so I'll do that later but it's on the top of my list I want to update those graphics what I can accomplish at the moment is I've got these various boxes people story etc don't worry about people at the moment that means your followers we don't have any so don't worry yet but we do have story under the story section we've got a tagline and an introduction a tagline is basically don't think about it literally as 10 words don't think about it as 10 keywords think about it as one co coherent sentence that explains what your company is about, one slogan, one tagline. So let's click edit the story. The screen changes here. So what one sentence describes your company? If you've got a name of a company like Victor's Bakery, it's pretty obvious what the company's about. They bake Victor's, right? <laughs> so but if you've got an esoteric name like PMD Interactive, what does PMD Interactive do? I'm going to make sure I use that tagline to explain what my company does. So use that sentence right there. It's not 10, 10 literal keywords. It's a complete sentence. So I'm going to say, family-owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake. That's my slogan. That's my tagline. Taglines of famous companies like, I'm loving it. Just do it. etc. Right? All the famous companies have a big slogan that defines what they do. Share a Coke with John. Right? Where do you know that? That's the tagline? It's sorry. Uh, I'll go to the phone. You've got the uh, story section right there, and you've got an edit button right below it. Thank you. Now, this tagline that I wrote here, Mm 
you're always going to think about posting content in terms of what your audience would like. If you're posting stuff in terms of what you will like, create a personal profile and have at it. You're going to think about what your audience will like. That'll be your first uh, criteria, and then second is other, you know, personal or creative purposes. They can interrelate, but what I'm getting at, what will your audience be interested in, respond to, care about? And this is a big topic. This is a whole concept of marketing that we, that we can't fully get into this class, even if we spent uh, eight weeks just on the concept of marketing. That's a whole college degree in marketing. I can give you general ideas, though, related to other topics. I'm thinking here in terms of SEO, search engine optimization. I'm thinking in terms of writing a coherent sentence for people that when they search on Google, they might find me. I could have easily written bakery. We sell cookies. I could write anything like that. But I've written here a dense sentence. Family-owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake. I've written a location, because I'm at a physical location. If you're at a physical location, you might think about how that tagline could incorporate your location. Do you mean East Lake, California, or East Lake, Michigan? I believe there's an East Lake, Michigan. East Lake, California. Well, and I've said also the keyword bakery. It's obvious in my name, but I'm also putting it here as part of a coherent sentence. And then, family-owned. People could be searching for that. Small businesses, family-owned. You know, what are people searching for in a bakery? Family-owned bakery in the heart of East Lake, specializing in, specializing in vegan goods. So it's literally not 10 words. It's one sentence that explains what your business is. Do not write a huge paragraph. That's what the introduction is for. But one coherent, short sentence, this one's a little bit long, but it, that explains what your business is about because that's what people could be typing in a Google search or in a search in Google+, and they might find you if you're specific. Question? In the tagline, that's where you want to use keywords? Yes, but that's not... That's how people will find you. Yes, but not literally just throwing your keyword's there. You do write you do want to write a sentence that uses the keywords. So family owned bakery in the heart of East Lake, California, specializing in vegan goods. That would work. If I think it's a little long, I could perhaps write it as family owned bakery in East Lake, California, specializing in vegan goods. So I've got those keywords, I've got a sentence, it makes sense, and if someone searches, I could be found. In the introduction is where I can then write a whole couple paragraphs if I want. Founded in 1989, Victor's Bakery leaves in blah 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 blah. Two paragraphs. Yes, you can also put in your keywords there, coherent sentences, bold, italics, bullet points, all of that. I would not stress too much, though, about writing a huge biography right here, because this is not going to be viewed very much or very long. People are going to look at your posts. When we looked at Mashable's page, we spent time looking at their posts. There was an About link there that I never looked at. You might have. You might have looked at Mashable's About page, but you didn't spend time lovingly reading every single thing there. People are going to care mo more about your posts. So don't worry too much here about writing a huge dissertation. Just a, maybe one short paragraph, because the content and the character of your uh, profile here will, be, will manifest from what you post on a regular basis. And what did I say as a beginner is a good regular basis? Once a week. Once a week. Yes. 
So you might not have been prepared to, to, to write the best thing here yet. That's okay. I'm just showing you, you want to edit this at some point. I'm going to click Save, even though I'm not done. You're probably not done either. But I'm going to click Save. Because we've also got communities. We'll get to those later. Contact information. That's also pretty important. I want people to be able to contact my business. And Google, the search engines, also want your contact information to be readily available. Spammers, websites, content information is never accurate or even available. You're never able to contact those spammers to get your money back. Real companies have contact information and the search engines look at that and they see this company is legitimate because they have contact information. So if you go back here to, these, to this about screen, click on edit contact information, we can add a phone number, mobile, email, fax, pager, if you're targeting hipsters I guess, chat, and address. So what would be more important for me would be that we've got an address here from my uh, business. phone number so whatever contact information you want to put out there um, one caveat here I don't know quite fully the answer for this but I'm more of a cynical on this there is an option for email I'm not quite comfortable putting an email address right there because it's very easy for spam bots to find it and put you on a spam list and send you spam. So even though there's an email box right there, I don't quite trust that. Um, over on my, my website, which is this other box down here of links, on my website I have a contact form there, so I'm not comfortable putting my email address naked out there for any spam bot to find because these spam bots are running 24 hours a day scouring the web trying to find anything that has a pattern that is something at something dot something. All emails are like that. Something at something dot something. And once the spam bot finds that pattern, it doesn't care. It's just going to put it in its database, resell it, and now you're on 10 mailing lists. So. I feel you shouldn't put in an email address there, but you should have a contact form on your website, which is more secure, or should be more secure. Question? So you recommend doing a contact form over putting an email address even on your website? Even on my website. I wouldn't put my email address naked on my, yeah, I wouldn't put it anywhere. With phones? That also is sort of iffy, but I don't really... That's why people are using Polly, right? That, that's a possibility. Yeah. So that, that's the same sort of thing there on phone. You have to decide. But the thing is, you can get a free Google Voice phone number. Google will give you a brand new free phone number. And there, you can set it up with voicemail, so you can have people call and you get a notification that says you have a new voicemail. And then they're never going to get to your real phone. Yeah, so a plain old classic phone number might not be the best thing anymore. On your own, I'm not going to get into it, but on your own, if you go to voice.google.com, you can sign up for a free phone number there. It will connect it with an existing phone number, but you can set it up so that people will automatically go straight to voicemail if they go to your Google Voice, or you can set it up so that, it, so that you will know on your personal phone that it's coming from your Google Voice. You can do all these cool tricks, but Google gives you a free phone number there. Look at that on your own, but that's one way that you could fill in this phone number without your personal cell phone or office phone number, you can have this Google Voice intermediary. And you can also put Skype. Skype lets you use phone numbers. Chat. Skype. You can set up a free Skype phone number.
So contact information. On these screens, I haven't really mentioned it, but have you been seeing something that says public in the corner? We'll talk about that later, that you can really lock down and protect your content on Google+, what's public, what's private, what's VIP content that only certain people can see. We'll get to that later. But you would really want most of this contact stuff public because you want any potential customers to contact you. Although we have other levels of privacy, which we'll get to later. You yes. Can't use a PO box if you have no, you can. can you? you can. Uh, you can literally write PO box whatever in there, and it'll work. But what's what's interesting nowadays? I don't know if all post offices do this. I know that my local post office box, they now have the ability for instead of you writing PO box one two three, you can use the PO box's location. So I can write eight thirty Coon Drive. Um, number one two whatever Chula Vista whatever mm -hmm. so I don't know if all post offices do that but mine sent out a mail to all of us and said you can use our physical location now with your post office number and then it'll look like a real address because some companies say will not ship the peel boxes this is how you can get around that okay. <laughs> we'll get to that a little later but uh, on the settings you're gonna see a settings button somewhere we'll, we'll do it but there's going to be a spot there for you to delete your Google Plus page if you don't want it actually save that and then there's links if you click on edit links I've already added my company's website but I can add other websites as well other links so for example, it asks for a label and an address. Let's say I'm also on Twitter. So I can add my Twitter address. Let's say I'm also on, fake, on Facebook or on Pinterest or whatever. And you, and you don't literally have to do that. You can also do this trick. What if you've got Shop Now? And then you have your web address, victorsbakery.com slash shop. What if you get the direct link to something on your website and label it as shop now? That's valid too. So any page. What about creating a landing page? I don't know what that is. It's basically a, a specific page on your site where you direct specific traffic to. So what if I created a page on my site called... Google um, coupons, and I and I label that as exclusive Google Plus coupons. So now I have a link on Google Plus, a landing page where people can go directly to it only from Google Plus. I'm not putting that on Twitter. I'm not putting that on Facebook. You see that all the time when you get emails from companies. They send you an email. They say use your exclusive coupon code. They're sending you to a specific landing page then they can track that person did click that link that person did use that coupon because they've linked it to a specific landing page how to do this that's out of our scope here take the WordPress class learning how to make pages on your site landing pages I'm gonna save that so let's take our second break you have some ideas perhaps what to fill in here don't worry about people and communities yet we'll do a 10 minute break one more time uh, when we come back at 3 we'll talk about then adding content and then getting followers